paint just to sort of show you. So I'm actually going to draw some of the the stuff that we see in here, like the rocks, the horizon line, a little bit of the mountains, but a lot of this uh, foliage and um, the leaves coming down and branches and stuff, I'm actually not even gonna draw in. I'm gonna add that stuff in over top and layer it in. So I'm not gonna draw everything right away from the beginning. So starting with that horizon line, just kind of wherever I want it to be. And the thing about gouache too is don't worry about like your pencil lines. You can definitely cover everything up with gouache. So I usually don't worry too much about that. And when I'm sketching too, I'm also not worried about being like exact. For me, it's, you know, kind of a loose representation of, of this landscape, but I'm gonna, you know, make it my own. And same with colors. Colors can easily be changed here. But just kind of these mountains in the back, I would sort of add in. Um, and then there's, you know, this kind of rock, this part of the land here that comes out too. So I'm even going to just loosely put a little something there. Landscapes, I think, can just be really fun in gouache because of how you can layer things up. Even this little rock out here, I'm just going to put in. And then I think about some of the water reflections just a little bit, just so uh, I can kind of balance that. And then there's that reflection, just the reflection of that rock in the water, that kind of land part. But again, I'm ignoring all the branches and leaves that kind of come over top of this, just sort of imagining what's in the background right now. And then I'm gonna add this rock in over here. And I'm just trying to keep the shapes very loose and uh, most of my detail is going to be with the gouache. And even those little trees in the background along the horizon line, I could really just paint those in. If I wanted to sketch them, I could, but painting them in would be fine. So even just something like this to get started could work. Just very loose. And then I'm going to work sort of back to front, but then also just, you know, kind of blocking in color as I typically do. And then after that stuff start, starts to dry, then I can start to bring in the stuff on top. So again, we'll see how far we get today, but if anyone has questions about any of our process as we're going along, let me know. And to start, I am just going to use some flat paint brushes, some smaller flat paint brushes. And I'm gonna start with this sky. And as far as color, like I said, I'm not super concerned with being exact. I'm more interested in just kind of creating something that I enjoy. So I'm just mixing some different blues together. And I'm on my palette, just reactivating some, some stuff I had in here. And I'm gonna mix some white on my palette too. Lighten that up a little bit. And then I'll start to get like the little bit of um, kind of orangey brightness in there too. And just bringing that in back here. And I'm just kind of letting the color just mix a little bit onto the paper itself. I'm not so concerned with every time I dip my brush in the paint, is it like the exact color, same color? You know, just those little variations in the sky can be nice. This is actually similar to watercolor in a sense of kind of how I'm starting this a little bit. And then remember the light can come on top of the dark as well. You just sometimes are gonna have to let things dry a little bit before you start to bring 
some of the light into it. So I'm gonna just block in all this blue first and then uh, let this dry and come back and add some of the orange just to kind of pump up those little clouds a little bit. But again, this can just be whatever I want it to look like. I can layer it up as much as I want to, just kind of layering some white on top a little bit, just lightening some areas up. And I'm not still concerned with, you know, if I get a little into the mountains or something there, that's fine. Because I'll uh, just paint right over top of that. Again, just thinking of layers. And right now I'm really working, you know, what's in the, the furthest thing away, the, the back. I'm just blending in a little bit more white. Again, just to lighten that up just a little bit. Just add a little dimension to the blue. And you can reactivate that paint on your paper. So if it's not quite what you want it to be, you can always move it around and shift it around a little bit with some water. So while this kind of dries, I'm actually gonna work down to my mountains a little bit and come back to this open area where I'm gonna bring in some of the clouds. And that's just gonna allow this to dry and I'm still kind of working with some similar blues. So, you know, why not start to put that in now? And again, I'm not so concerned with that the colors are exact, but we see some atmospheric perspective here. So you'll notice that the mountains, if you are using the same reference photo as I am, that is, uh, you'll notice the mountains get lighter as they go back. Um, and that's atmospheric perspective. So to really create that, I wanna punch up the contrast of this mountain in the front. And then as I work my way back, I can add white to just lighten that. Just mixing some different blues together and just kind of experimenting really. I mean, it's kind of fun to just create some little mixtures and remember you can always darken with compliments. If you wanna to try to darken something like a little orange into my blue would help uh, just mute it a little bit to make it look a little bit more like that blue that we're seeing there. And I'm just starting kind of light, um, or sorry, I shouldn't say light, but with uh, washes, so light washes. And I'm gonna kind of build this up. And remember when it comes to gouache, you can paint very thick or you can start with washes, but it's really difficult to add washes on top of thick dry paint with gouache since it lifts up. Sometimes you might wanna do that on purpose but you know, just something to keep in mind as you're deciding the consistency of your paint. And that's the thing with gouache, like a lot of different consistencies can work. So, and you're gonna get different looks if you kind of add washes and then some thick areas versus if everything's just very thick from the start. So one's not better than the other, it's just your preference and how it looks. So. There'll be areas that I'll just apply very thick right away and then areas that I like to sort of wash more first. And some people do like to do some washes with watercolor first and then bring in gouache, that works too. So lots of options. These mountains are pretty solid. You're not really seeing a ton of texture in them, but you could add texture if you wanted to. It just kind of depends. 
I'm still just using some uh, smaller flat brushes, but some round brushes could be really nice for this too, depending. And then really with this blue color that I have going on here, I'm seeing a little bit of it in the water actually. So I'm gonna just pop in a little bit of this blue down in here in the foreground. And how I'm just letting it kind of go off to the edge because eventually green kind of bushes and branches will be coming out from here. So it doesn't have to go all the way over. just to kind of start to get a little something in there. And then remember with gouache, we can layer and we can build on top. So if you're used to painting in watercolor and used to like reflections, leaving the white open from the paper, you don't have to do that with gouache. You can just fill in the area and paint your highlights on top. Again, I'm not so concerned with my color being identical to the photograph. The photograph is just more so helping with the composition and weighing things out and what should be light, what should be dark. It's a way to kind of interpret texture. So again, don't feel too bound to that photo. Don't feel like you've got to be exact. And actually, I'm going to lighten up a little bit and do a little bit more kind of back here. And I personally like to repeat when I'm painting, I like to have the color more than one place. If I can help it just help create balance. And so that's often too well, I'll change colors a little bit because I'll just sort of customize it a little bit more based on my color scheme for my painting. And honestly, these rocks over here as well. Um, these uh, rocks over here as well are kind of a similar color. I'm gonna mix just a little bit more kind of of this brown I created and just neutralize a little bit more of it. Same thing, and I'm not gonna put a ton of detail into these because the branches really do go over top of them quite a bit. This is just going to allow me to kind of get what's behind. So today things might look, you know, a little, a little rougher as we start to block stuff in, but then it'll all start to come together when we start to build up our layers. So I'm just using the same color uh, over here into these rocks. Again, it's not quite what the color is in the photo, but it's just creating some nice balance. So I'm using this color and just sort of blocking in the dark areas that we're seeing kind of in this rock, kind of rock land formation. It's a little bit more brown actually in the photo and I'm kind of making a little bit more gray right now. Just kind of keeping things pretty loose right now. I'm still focusing, you know, you want to focus on that bigger picture first. We'll get to all those little intricate details and and all that. So I am uh, gonna finish up these mountains in the back there. And I think I might switch to a round brush just for a little bit more control. And I'm just gonna lighten, lighten that value up now.
here, I want to be a little careful though, because I don't want it to blend in with my um, sky completely either, so. Yeah, it definitely is starting to take on a similar feel of the sky, but I still want to see the different values there of the mountain. So I might actually end up lightening up the sky just a bit too. And one way I can even lighten the sky actually is to even just, so this is one reason I love wash. I can take just some wet um, white paint with a damp brush and I could just start working it into the paint that's already here. This is one way to do it. Now I could definitely just layer over top. But if I just really get my brush nice and wet, I can just start to blend this into the sky and just get this nice lighter sky. And it just blends in real nicely. But again, a lot of water is key for it to start to blend too, because if you're just uh, sitting the paint on top, it's gonna look a little bit more layered. But this is a great way to like alter something if you need to lighten it. So like I said, I don't want that to blend in too much with my mountains back there. I'm gonna be able to tell the difference between the sky and the mountains. Yeah, it's really nice. It's just pulling up that existing blue and just blending it into the, the white I'm laying down. So you could do a similar thing with oil paints really while they're wet, but other than that, there's no other paint that you can really do this with and be able to blend another color in and lift it up. And of course, oil paint, once it's dry, you're not gonna be able to lift it up, but you can get those nice blends because it stays wet so long. And yeah, what do, you, what do you mean when you say lift up? So what I mean is the blue paint that I put on here initially, when I put water on here, it reactivates. So it comes back up and is mixing with this new white that I'm laying down. Thank you. You're welcome. So this too just allows you to take your time and Get things how you want them to be, you know? And two, there's that, well, yes, like in acrylics, okay, you can paint over something to fix it. Here, it just means that you can keep shifting things that are here until you get them how you want them to be. Down here as well, I'm gonna bring in some white and just do the same thing along that edge of those mountains and then I can paint those back of those mountains in too. This is going to be a really fun one too I think as we start to layer on top. It's going to just really bring things together. All right, now I can get those back mountains and they should. Shouldn't blend in so much.
So I'm just gonna let this dry back here for a little bit, just because it's really damp and just needs to sit for a minute. So while that's drying, I'm just gonna start adding some more browns and kind of work with these rocks a little bit. And then I'm also gonna work um, into the water. So yeah, I just kinda wanna get everything behind those layers coming in front. And then I just, so if you ever need to clean off your palette, like I'm just getting some mud happening here. I like to just take a damp paper towel and just wipe that away. And then I'm ready to put down some new colors and it's not going to get all muddy and make a mess. It takes a couple layers to <laughs> remove, but there we go. So then I can get some more browns. I'm actually darkening my brown just a bit with some uh, purple. And also use a bit of like a dark blue. And I'm gonna just start layering in some of the dark areas first. And I'm just keeping it very simple, loose brush strokes. There's not a ton of detail at this point, just sort of blocking in some of the, the base color that's there. And I'm punching it up a little bit. That's why I put a little purple in there, just to give it like a, a little something extra. I thought it looked nice. Again, that's just playing with color a little bit, not having to be exact to what you're seeing in the photo. But that value structure is still intact. I'm making it dark where it's dark. bringing just a, a bit of black into this as well just to for these kind of shadows in the water reflections in the water I should say and the water really is just all these little horizontal lines and different little colors so layering layering that up is really going to help. And just remember, sometimes you're just gonna have to let things dry before you continue to layer. So that, just like watercolor, just like acrylic, uh, that still remains true with wash. You just gotta give it a minute sometimes. You can blow dry it if you want to use a hair dryer. I'm just looking at all those little dark areas and just trying to just loosely block those in and leave openings kind of for other colors to merge in. And I'm just kind of doing like little, almost little small tappy kind of brush strokes, just keeping it nice and soft. Don't be afraid to really push those those dark values and make them nice and dark. So when it comes to a landscape, even something that's more stylized and expressive and less realistic, we want to have a sense of space and depth. We want it to appear like those mountains are far back and those kind of rocks and the trees and stuff are going to be in the foreground. 
So by having really dark areas, it helps uh, push things back far. And having light areas helps things come forward in space. bringing like a lighter kind of value of that same kind of color I had it's like this gray gray purpley brown color and some of this stuff's not gonna feel like much yet but this is I think landscapes are paintings that just they take a little bit to come together but then all of a sudden they come together and you're like, okay, yeah, I see it now. So that's why I wanted to give us two sessions for this one. I'm just adding some lighter uh, white into this, making a lighter value. It's still just kind of, you know, grabbing from little bits of this. And all these values are gonna work together to just start to build up that rock texture. And I'm not even so concerned with making it look like a rock right now. Keep in mind, our brain likes to label things. And if you're like, I just, I try not to label as much as possible and try to break it down and just talk to myself in terms of shapes and colors really, and values. And that's because, again, I'm not trying to look at texture right now. I'm not necessarily trying to look at all that fine detail. And I think when we try to identify things, I don't know, at least for me, kind of makes it tricky. So I'm just, yeah, just think about, okay, is it dark? Is it light? And then just think about direction of my brush stroke too. How could I sort of create this sort of horizontal looking kind of piece right here. So yeah, just some things that kind of go through my head as I'm painting. I'm just adding some different browns into here now. And that's the fun thing about painting things from nature. You know, there's so many little color shifts and variations and like rocks and stuff. So there's a lot of room to just kind of do what you want to do. And I'm just continuing to just tap and add little layers of color over here. And then I'll kind of, you know, again, my goal is to just get paint over everything. And then I can start to add texture and all the, the foliage over top. So I don't know that I will get to branches today, but maybe we'll see. And so this part over here is so much green is really covering this. So I'm just putting in like a, a neutral background just to give it a background, but so much of that's going to be covered. So it really doesn't even matter. Say like I got like a little space sitting there that honestly that's gonna end up being lots of um, branches. So I'm just gonna put like a little green right here because green is gonna start coming through here anyway. So. Remember, some of this background will be covered up. So just, you know, kind of think about that as you're starting to, to add in layers and, you know, paying attention to how much detail you actually want there. Because if it's going to be covered, just a base color can be fine. You don't need anything else. And same with this rock over here. I mean, really, we're just seeing kind of pops of it uh, through the tree. So again, this can just be sort of loose, just kind of a general color over top, just because we see bits of it popping through. And you know, I just add a little highlight kind of area. So again, just like you've got those dark areas, you want to have those light areas too. Helps create that depth. So 
So now I'm really to a point where I want to let this dry and I can go back and bring some of that lightness up into the sky. And then I can come back down into the water. So yeah, I just really like to let things dry occasionally, just give it some time. So I'm just going to clean off uh, my palette here again so I can have room for some oranges. And those contaminate easily, so I want to make sure all that other color is out of there. And I'm definitely going to uh, bring some white fresh from the tube. Even though you can reactivate gouache, just keep in mind like fresh from the tube is uh, the thickest it's going to uh, ever be, even if you reactivate gouache. So um, when it comes to the white, I, I want that nice and thick so I have good coverage over the blue. So I definitely wanted that from the tube. And I might want to bring just a little yellow into it, like a lemon yellow. I'm just keeping, I'm mixing this up real good, but keeping the paint fairly thick. I've got water on my brush so the paint will move, but other than that, it's fairly thick because I want this to sit on top. I don't want the blue to lift up and overpower the orange here, or this light, I guess it's not fully orange, but this kind of light yellowy orange that I can then put into the sky. So this is, the thickest paint I've used yet. And again, some of, so much of this is, is going to be covered. It's sitting in the back. So, but I still want to imagine, you know, what would it look like back there, even though I'm not seeing everything. So I'm still filling all this area, even though some will be covered. And just remember orange and blue are complementary. So if you are careful and you do a little, you could do a little light blending if you do want this to look like it's a little bit more kind of into the blue. And then really there's some uh, darker clouds sort of sitting on top of some of this light. So I may even bring some more dark into here too. So we'll see. And same as uh, before, I'm not so concerned if this is identical to the picture. I'm just sort of capturing the basic idea. This is one thing right here. It's like you really can't do with watercolor in the same way that you can with gouache and allow this light, light color to sit on top of this dark color in this way. I can let, you know, areas dry and sort of come back in. I can layer this up as much as I want. And then, you know, there might be areas that I even want to lighten up within here and I can add some more white into areas. So yeah, you can really play with how you layer and blend with the gouache, which I think is really fun. Excuse me. Yeah. And then really, you know, we're seeing some of that color, the oranges and things into the, the water as well. So 
I could just kind of begin by laying just a little down here. And I'll bring some blue into here as well and we'll kind of create a blend, but. Sometimes with colors, it's a it's going back and forth. It's not always one color than the next, but. And even some of these kind of brighter oranges can start to be laid in a little bit here. And just little kind of horizontal strokes. You know, just building it up. It's, take some layers, you know, not everything has to be put down in, in one layer. I'm just going to come back into the sky a little bit more and just Continue to kind of punch up those little cloud areas. And then I've got one more little space of mountains back there, actually. I kind of, I wasn't sure if it was sky or mountains, to be honest. So I kind of just left it alone. And I, I think I'm now realizing that it is in fact mountains. You know, you can uh, wipe some paint off your brush and then kind of come back in to get more of like a lighter or like kind of dry brush effect. I'm bringing in kind of a lighter blue to just kind of bring in some of these little clouds at the bottom. I'll actually bring some white into them as well, but I just wanted to get kind of a loose shape in there first. You know, I can bring some more up here. And too, those, when, I think when those leaves come down too, it's just going to create this really cool, cool frame around it. And just so you know, like with those leaves, after your paint dries, you can draw them in with pencil on top of this if you want to, or you can just sort of paint them in, it, it, you know, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Well, I'm just gonna get that last little mountain in there a minute. And... I'm not totally done with the sky yet either, but I do want to let some little areas dry up. And then I'm going to just layer a little bit more on top, just to create a little bit more depth. And then I think uh, the sky will be about done. And then it's just a matter too of starting to block in more water. And water, I tend to like to almost paint a little bit more like watercolor, at least in the beginning, where it's just very light and transparent. And then I just like to build, build that up. And I just feel like that just gives me control. Over here, it kind of gets a little greenish, kind of a little turquoisey color, which I, I like that little variation. So I'm gonna put that in. That could easily 
be something different if you didn't like that idea. Again, just it's there's lots of trees coming up over this area too. So I'm just imagining, you know, what would that sort of bat, what would it look like behind all that if that wasn't there? You have to imagine a little bit, so that's okay. It's the beauty of landscapes too, is I, I feel like they're forgiving in that, that sense is because nature can look so many different ways that it doesn't have to be this exact one thing. So lots of room for you to make this look like you want it to. And I just like to bring in variations of blues. Again, having all these different blues sort of overlapping helps create depth in the water. And when you look at the water, there's just so uh, much texture. So I'm just interpre inter interpreting it with overlapping lines in different colors. Again, just light, a little thin round brush is real nice through here. And actually, I think this is gonna line up perfectly because this will allow us to get this kind of background in place and then spend our next session working on the um, finishing touches and all the little branches. But personally, I mean, it's like you could draw those branches in just so you know if you want to draw them in ahead of time. There's no reason you can't do that. I just feel like this just simplifies a little bit more, which is why I chose to approach it this way. And there's a, like this spot right here is like all green basically. So much of this is just going to be covered. So I might just, kind of just put like a neutral kind of grayish blue just there just as a wash almost and I'll start building the foliage on there so this spot's not going to look like anything special but it's just again because there's really there's nothing really there so this just puts a little paint down there for me so this spot just isn't super exciting and same with down here really too lots of little grasses are going to come through here so we're just seeing kind of what's behind right now. And you can do a little color mixing right on your actual painting too, just like we did with the white and the light in the sky. And I'll still continue to add more detailing in the water next time as well. This will just give me a nice little kind of base. And same with the rocks. I'm going to touch them up a little bit more in areas. I definitely want to see some more texture coming through here. That's not done yet. <laughs> the dark area, the shadow of reflection in the water. I definitely want that darker than it is currently. So I'm gonna bring just a little blue into it and then just bring some black into it too. I'm just really darken that. But I want a little blue just because it is water. And I'm not trying to make it like solid, solid black, but I do want to really punch up that contrast through here. And 
even up here a little bit. We're seeing a little a darker value. Just want to get all this, these areas ready because I've got some little trees to start to put in. And so anything that might be sort of behind, I want to get that in now. Like with just a little bit of black and water on my brush, I can just sort of blend that into this existing color. And actually there's, you know, a little bit of a highlight over here too that I just wanna pop in. I'm just not really making anything on the rock super solid. I keep calling it a rock. I mean, there's like rocks, but you know, it's kind of like that little island, island guy there. Or a little peninsula guy. Maybe it's a peninsula, not an island. Again, just whatever that kind of texture is. There's so much green is going to come up over top of this here. And that little dark kind of line around the bottom of a rock too, just kind of helps it look like it's sitting in the water a little bit more. Just bring it a little bit more through here. And you know, you might be faster than me, you might be slower than me. Just remember, we all paint to at our different paces. And you know, this gouache can really take as long as you want it to. It just depends if you want it to be, you know, a quicker kind of study or if you want to spend a little bit more time on it. So next week, Wednesday, we'll have a studio hour session where you can, you know, work on anything that you need some time to catch up on. You know, maybe you want to continue this or maybe you want to practice spheres from yesterday or maybe you just need to pull out something you haven't worked on in a while and finish it up. So yeah, we'll come back to this on, on the 16th. Um, so I would say, you know, a good place to be for the 16th would be to have just a layer of paint over everything. And then uh, we'll kind of be ready to start talking about adding some of the leaves and plants and bushes and stuff. Uh, but if you feel ready and you feel like you want to start that sooner, go for it. I'm just kind of blending a little bit of a, a darker value. I just want to make this give it a little bit more contrast. And then the other thing I actually do want to do before I start the trees overlapping is the trees kind of going along the back. So I'll actually probably start there next time. And I'm going to just kind of darken this just a little bit more, build up this. And I want to bring some more of um, actual orange kind of right into here. And I'm going to do that in a very similar way that I did the sky where uh, my paint is a little bit thicker. Okay, and then you can start to paint those areas just right on top and just layer, layer them to get those little reflections and highlights. And it's real vibrant here. And there is some uh, 
little grasses that go over this, but again, I'm imagining kind of what's behind first. So painting this a little bit bigger than what it actually is going to be. Well, we've got about five minutes uh, left for today. And I actually have a quick meeting at uh, right when our session is done. So we'll have to hop off right when we finish. Um, so I think what we should do is just in a second, um, we can all pop ours up and just hold them up for today. And then uh, next time we can look at everyone's a little bit closer, more in depth and uh, we'll continue to work on these. So, you know, if you wanna continue in the meantime, um, in between our session, go for it, just keep layering. Um, but my plan next time is to just really kind of wrap this up and bring it together and just bring those greens around and uh, kind of frame everything up. So 